Hi everybody, I'm here with Phil Dwyer. He's running for Dublin Southwest for National Party and we're going to have a chat today about his uh, candidacy and many other things. So thanks for joining me, Phil. Thanks for having me, Gerald. Yes. So what, uh, what brought you to the National Party? Um, the National Party, I suppose, you know, to blame my three amazing sons. Um, yeah. They are uh, very into their politics. Mm. They're very bright. They're very intellectual. Um, they're not perfect now by any stretch of the imagination, but you know I love them dearly. But uh, we do have great mm. talks and debates and chats. But um, it initially started three years ago when I um, watched Donald Trump get elected with yeah. horror. I was very ignorant about the whole scene, yeah. and I wasn't a great fan of his. Oh, well, you weren't. So you didn't no. like him then. Well, I didn't like him then. Um, I just thought he was some kind of egomaniac, mm. um, and I was really worried for. And then the lads used to say, Dad, no, no. They had their research done and all this. Mm. They had known about the media um, and their dastardly deeds. And uh, they kind of said, look it up yourself, Dad. Look it up, you know. And then that's when I started to check out the uh, alternative media. Mm. The guys like yourself, you know, the guys like Keith Woods, who I um, made a mistake on the other day in an interview. But uh, let me correct that one. The great Keith Woods and and um, Grant Torino, Ron Croft, yeah. and the great Dave Cullen as well. All yeah. these guys who are just trying to put the truth out there, mm. and unashamedly, unafraid, and admire you guys greatly. Um, yeah. And when you do a bit of that, and then there's loads of other people online that you can go to. Um, and in America, I did, but I mean, we're not here to talk about America, but mm. it woke me up to the Irish media mm. and the Irish government. You know even our universities or colleges, you know, they're lying to people, they're indoctrinating mm. people, and it's an agenda, you know, and it's a globalist EU agenda, and it's destroying Irish, Irishness and Irish people. Yeah. And, and what we stand for and our heritage and our culture, and um, it's not about economics. It has mm. to, economics have to, has to come secondary, in my opinion. You know? yeah. yeah, I'm always rambling about that, so I'm glad I don't have to say it. It's true. I I I I completely agree, like you know, I harp on about it. Like, the economy serves people, not the other way around, doesn't it? Exactly. Um, I don't know. I think when people get kind of red pill like that, mm. you know, sometimes people do it really quickly. They do a flip, and I don't know what it was like for you, but I think. I think people are just given permission to think a certain way, you know. So mm -hmm. it's not like they learn a bunch of new stuff and change their point of view. They might have been thinking that way slightly all along, mm -hmm. but you just can't say certain things. Mm -hmm. Um, but once once people are given permission to talk about basic things like uh, immigration, uh, obviously the drag queen story or stuff like that, I mean, it's not totally radical stuff, like, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, I'm curious from you as well, is what kind of, like, at the door, what are you saying to people you're concerned about? Well, at the door, I suppose it's it's it's, it's fairly pertinent in, in Dublin Southwest and especially mm -hmm. around maybe the Tala area, like immigration is definitely um, mass immigration is a, is a big one and mm. you know people are starting to come around now I think they're starting to believe their eyes like I mean when you walk out my area and mm. um, it's it's roughly I'd say 70% of the population now in this part of Tala is, is non-Irish you don't hear um, English the English language being spoken very much on the streets when you're mm. walking by you walk into Lewis and you don't and it doesn't mean that these people are not bad people they're but during their day's work, mm. the majority of them are working, and um, they come here. They try to make a contribution, but um, it just doesn't feel right, you know. It doesn't feel like it. it doesn't even feel like Ireland, you know. Mm. And it's concern. It's a concern I have, mm. and and we just have to, you know, acknowledge that it is mm. a problem. You know, it's not going to be good for our society. And I, I mean, whether we like it or not, with the best will in the world, if the population here now is at seventy percent, it's going to go to 95, 96% mm. in a short because Irish people will gener will, will leave, right. you know, and yeah. we can be pretend about it if we want, mm. but that's the reality of what's going to happen, that's, it's the same thing every, every other society around the world, you know, you'll see it in America, you'll see it in England, you'll see it in France, that these areas just become areas of foreign people, non-nationals, mm. um, and Irish people move away into, into their own areas. You and know. funnily enough as well, it's, um, you know, it, so we're talking about Tala, but it could be Balbriggan, it could be other areas like mm. that. Very, very diverse indeed, but Donkey, Donkey mm -hmm. is like, you know. Exactly. Uh, different story. 
these, um, yeah, I mean, these, I want to call them elitist hub areas, these well-to-do areas. Um, and don't get me wrong, I know I have plenty of friends who live and come from these areas and they're fantastic people. Mm. But you can tell, you know, when you're trying to talk about these things, like it's just the subject has changed. Mm. Like they just turn away and, oh yeah, we'll talk about, you know, yeah, who's winning the soccer match and Sky Sports or, you know, who's winning the game match. And, you know, people don't want to go there because you're, you're kind of bursting their bubble, you know. Yeah. They're, they're living, they're not seeing what I'm seeing every mm. day, you know. They, they, and even when they do see it, they don't believe their eyes or they, mm. they, they don't acknowledge it mm. what's going on. And because, you know, I have a good job. Mm. Have a nice house. I'm doing well, mm. and it's not affecting me. So, mm. I, and I can't change it, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah, and that to me, it's like I was never that kind of person. I was always a person who would just see what's happening and never be afraid to talk about it or never be afraid to challenge something, you know. Um, I was always kind of. I was the same way if I when I was playing sport. You, anybody who knows me, hurling or football, you know, if the challenge is there, I was going in for it, and yeah. I feel the same way. But it, you know, in in one sense, it's like um, it's it, it, the joining the national party. Like you asked me before, I mean, it, what led me to it? This is what has led me to it. This this is the party that you know talks the most sense and it, mm. it's, it's it cares the most about Irish people, mm. um, and that's basically it. I'm not a big philo- philosopher, or philosophical guy. I'm not as well read as a lot of people on you know culture and history and you know, um, but I still feel the same. Irishness and, and love of Ireland, mm. you know, than anybody who's yeah. more well read than me, you know. Yeah, there's there's a lot like there's a lot to be said for, uh, kind of the intellectual side of things. But I mean, you can gain as much intellectually from your gut and from your instinct as you can from a book, and I think anyway. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. And it sounds like that's what you're kind of saying. Now, what's like you were saying to me uh, off camera that you're kind of addicted to it, like you. You know, tell me more about that, like, because it, well, it was a new experience for you, canvassing, wasn't it? It is a new, it is a new experience, but I mean, it, it the addictive thing is like it, it is, it can, it could be, and it can be addictive. I wouldn't go as far as to say as I'm addicted yet, but I can, okay. I can feel this draw, like that, mm. like you're, you're meeting these people and you're you're giving this message, and you know, there's no um, there's no real rehearsal, and you're just going out and you're just expressing yourself and you're telling the truth, trying to tell the truth to people. That they haven't heard in years, you know, mm-hmm. and they that they know it's there, like they know the reality is there, and they know the nonsense is there, like, and they just haven't seen anybody being able to go out there and have the the courage, you know, like all our members, all our all our candidates, and just express it, like, and um, it's just to get this reaction of hard work and Irish people. What's the reaction? The reaction is like, I, my God, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I totally and. This isn't fair, and that's not fair, mm. and um, they shouldn't be ashamed to say it because it actually isn't fair, mm. and that's the reality, you know. And if you if you can stick to reality and truth and logic and reason, you know, you can never go far wrong. And then um, it's just it, it's there's a great joy in it, like you know what I mean. And then I have my three sons who are coming with me, you know, and they're standing beside me, like I mean, it makes you very proud, mm. and, and you're doing it for them, like I mean, they're, you know, like I probably see myself as a bit of a pathfinder, and then look. If I am lucky enough to get elected, mm. hopefully, and then you know, move on and leave for them, and you know they'll grow into something, mm. you know, in the party or in some kind of other roles, and um, and but they, you know, they believe in something, and and it's an amazing feeling to believe in something worthwhile again. You know, it really feels worthwhile yeah. to do this. Like you know, there's no, it's not for money, it's not for greed, it's not for anything else. Only that you just want the best for Irish people in their own country. That's it, you know. It's pretty straightforward, and, and that is a really nice way to describe it as well, uh, how fulfilling it is. Because, I, I don't know, that's the, what I've been harping on about as well, is that mm. going, or seeing people at doors is, is just a re- refreshing mm. as compared to the, uh, even things like this, you know, not to berate what we're doing right now, but even things like online things and all of that, mm. it's great to be out there, mm. um, and it gives you a fresh perspective. You said people, people like agree with you on most of the immigration stuff, but they just haven't heard of it before or whatever, which is really surprising. The media in Ireland, like, what do you make of the media in Ireland? Corrupt. There's one yeah. word, like, they're corrupted and um, they're totally on the side of the establishment. Mm-hmm. Um, they're complete shills to the EU. Um, they keep promoting this agenda of um, the Irish people are, 
you know we're we're not treating our immigrants well um, we're not uh, we're, we're anti gay you know we're anti lgbt um, we're, we're we're like religious these religions that come in and where these cultures that come in you know that we need to be more respectful and mm. everything else we're the most respectful people and generous kind people in the world mm. you know and they won't tell you like the harsh facts and and you know like things like you know, twenty percent of the population now are non-Irish. You know, at least, yeah. At least, yeah. and we're, I, I'm always trying to be conservative about that. I'm yeah, not, you're right. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to exaggerate stuff, and then mm. someone come back to you and then say, "Oh, you said this." You know, and mm. um, someone wants to prove me wrong. You know, look up the stats mm. on the government websites. You know, it's it it's not me just making figures up out of my head. You know, and that to me, that demographic is crazy. You know, and and what's fascinating as well is that, like, if you were to talk to, let's say, a British person. Uh, British uh, nationalist um, or a French nationalist they would say our media is uh, very uh, you know uh, owned on this thing we don't have a discussion it's it's mm-hmm. very partisan and all of that you would hear but mm-hmm. I think it's the next level here because they will at least have say um, say Sky News or something mm-hmm. you'll have the let's say the globalist uh, panelist but mm-hmm. then you'll have Douglas Murray or someone like that right mm-hmm. when was the last time you saw in Ireland exactly. anything yeah. I genuinely can't think of any no not one. No, and 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 it's like the the brazenness of it all. I mean, like, and and you meet people in, on the doorsteps, and they'll actually, you know, if that comes up in the conversation, they'll say, yeah, yeah, and and I'm trying to say, well, look, this should really concern you, like, because this is manipulation of our democratic system. They're a public broadcaster, mm. you know. Like recently, we had uh, Justin Barrett like demonized on the Clareborn live show, you know, and um, they. Um, you know, Claire Bourne, and, and, and they played a 30 second clip of um, Boris O'Kane and um, tried to make him look as bad as possible. And then after the clip, they just castigated him. And he's a far right, more or less fascist, and didn't give the man an opportunity mm. to sit down and defend himself. Like this, that's fascism, if you ask me. Yeah. You know, so, um, they, and, and they're just getting away with it. And people, like, have, they're such an institution in the country that people and, and say the older people are so used to watching it, like that. Mm. A lot of them aren't getting this. Like this mm. is completely wrong. Like this has never happened before. Mm. It used to be twenty odd years ago. Like you'd have both sides mm. of each store of each um, um, situation or each topic, you know. Mm. And they would uh, they would hammer it out, and we'd all say, "Right, well, I, I think he's telling the truth, yeah. or he, this guy is full of crap." Yeah. And that's it. The people would get a fair um, synopsis of what's yeah. going on, you know. And, and it's 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 just glowingly obvious. You watch the telly or read the newspapers. There is just even if you're not familiar with our kind of politics, mm-hmm. you just look at it and go, it surely it should raise an alarm bell. You go, I'm hearing one thing every day. Mm. I see it online, you go on your Google News and you open up Irish Times and you mm. see RT. It's just one thing over and over <coughs> again about this uh, this radical right and all of this kind of stuff, over and over again. And I feel like the viewers must be watching it going, who are these people? Even if they're bad, I want to hear from them to see mm-hmm. how bad they are. But of course, if they heard from people, it would be perfectly reasonable, perfect, perfectly uh, factual. If Justin got a chance to speak on RT, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you're going to talk about people like him constantly, just bring him on for a little bit. You exactly. can even put him two on one. I'm sure he would do fine. You if, know, if he's that bad, I mean, and he he's that you know fascistic or racist, why can't you debate him and, and show people? And it, it should be easy for you yeah. to destroy the man on uh, on on his on his points mm. and on his beliefs. Mm. But um, no, they don't because they're just afraid. I mean. You, even the even the coverage of the elections now with Rebecca Barrett there in Limerick and RTE, mm. <laughs> it was a list on the screen, and they they failed to call out her name from the list on the screen. Surely people are, are looking at this and saying, "Sorry, what? Yeah, this this woman is you know yeah. is left out." And um, the Irish Times did two articles on the Northwest um, Dublin Northwest with Stephen Redmond, um, who was on the ticket as a candidate and. Uh, his name isn't put on the list. They mm. they have a they're given an analysis of who could get in, um, and they don't um, include them. And then the same with Southwest as well. Yeah. The same day they didn't um, include my name on the list, and like who do these people think they're cotton? Like the yeah. Irish people are waking up to this, and yeah. and, and and from the doorsteps, um, you're hearing what people are saying. They are completely detached from the reality of what people are feeling on on the doorsteps. You know. Maybe I'm giving these guys too much information. I mean, you know what I mean. They don't, they don't, they don't deserve to know this because they just don't care. You know, I, that's about a, the people. A interesting way of phrasing it is that they don't care because these, uh, 
and some of them might be okay, but largely the Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, kind of the D4 type, the central government mm. types, the Irish Times types, the communications network agencies who operate with these people, mm. NGOs, all of these things. And that kind of class of people, when I talk to them, which you know, every now and again you get a little moment where you speak to them and you maybe don't give them your full views or whatever and you just get to hear what they have to say. And I get an air of cynicism from them. It's not even that they're on the opposite side to where we are and they mm-hmm. really care about it. They just see it all as a big game mm-hmm. and what I would see it as opportunism. Mm-hmm. So I think it's refreshing to see someone like you, national party candidates, IFP candidates, ACI, and mm-hmm. even some independents. You meet some independents and they're, they're, they don't, they're not one way or the other, but they're just genuine. Mm-hmm. And I think all people should look for that in their candidates, just genuine. It's not even so much the politics in detail, just um, people who seem to care and they're not cynical um, globalist scumbags I don't know yeah. I, I can't think of better words and look I mean if there's one thing that the Irish are good at is identifying these uh, idiots these yeah. false people um, and from what I'm hearing at the doorsteps everybody is sick of these um, mainstream parties now they're just so false pretentious mm. they come out with double speak out of the side of their mouths quoting facts and figures it's make them, they make it sound like they know what they're doing and they know that they have or they think they have you know a way to bring the country down the right direction and look at the mess it's in you know and it's just people are so sick of it now you know mm. um, and and they, they they don't seem to it must be it's cognitive dissonance whatever you want to call it um, they just don't seem to um, be able to understand it like you mm. know um, and it'll be to their detriment you mm. know hopefully this election now and definitely the next one and the mm. one after there's the green wave is coming um, yeah. and it's going to hit them hard, yeah. you know. <clears throat> um, I've only a couple more questions for you now because yeah. uh, I don't want to take up too much of your yeah. time. Um, you said in a video you put on Twitter that you're, it was a short enough video, promo kind of thing, mm-hmm. that you're doing it for your kids. Mm. Uh, what do you worry about for the next generation and what would you like for the next generation, for your own kids? What concerns you? Yeah, well, I mean, <coughs> you know, it's a, a basic fundamental for any young person, you know, growing up, being reared by their parents, mm. you know, mother and father, or one or the other, um, that, you know, they can't live under their wing forever. Mm. Um, and our Irish young people um, are finding it really difficult. They're not getting government support. Um, they're competing against non-nationals. I mean, I don't know what the figure was. Did you say there was possibly 60,000 uh, immigrants come into Ireland are coming in per year. Uh, it depends whether you look at net, etc. But there's yeah. a lot, yeah, yeah. And then if that that occurs, then we're losing uh, our young people. They're emigrating out of the, you know, the, the the hopelessness of it all. Um, and then the ones that are left, you know, the narcissism. I talked about it before. Um, you know, they don't see a future, and you know, they're stuck in their parents' house. Um, how are they going to have a proper relationship? Um, settle down, have kids. You know, and again, it's it's affecting our population. We're not replacing ourselves now, and um, they deserve a lot better. You know, and on top of all of this, and um, their Irishness and their culture, their heritage. Mm. You know, their spirit. Like it's it's all been eroded away, and mm. and this it all. Looking at it all, it is a it is a plan. It is, there there is an EU plan. There is a globalist plan, to just dehumanize us, put us into a box, uh, and make us into economic units. Yeah. And um, it is frightening stuff, but it has to be pushed back on now. Like you know, we're not about going back to the fifties and the forties. Mm. We're about, you know, progressing forward in you know with our Irishness and our Irish spirit and our Irish culture. You know, we're we're not interested in looking back either. Mm. Like you know, we love our past, we mm. love our history, but we want to go forward mm. as Irish people, as 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 a, a nation. You know, and it shouldn't be controversial. There should yeah. be nothing wrong with it. You know? Yeah, I, I I do wonder about. Uh, the younger generation, millennials and Generation Z Zoomers, mm. um, as they grow up and they're still Peter Panning with their parents and all of that, and they can't get on the ladder, which means they can't have kids. So there's no kind of future there for a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people. What about when, you know, their parents, uh, I'd like to have a better figure of speech than die off, but when their parents pass away, and now they're the boomers, you know, mm-hmm. um, and there's nowhere left, you can't stay with them anymore. You can't, uh, they might inherit the property of them, but what about another generation down? There'll be mm-hmm. nothing left. There'll be no fumes for people to live off their parents or the last generation's 
um, wealth anymore. So mm. uh, no home, no kids. Also, when people uh, my age and younger or in my age, in their twenties and thirties, mm-hmm. um, don't have kids. What about when they're sixty and seventy? You know, exactly. It's and scary. No, I'm not here to ramble because it's it's. I'm, I'm interviewing you. The the final thing I want to ask you about is the posters. Yes. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, yeah, we've had a a kind of a um, and not just me. It's happened um, down in Longford for James Reynolds and. Um, I think it's is it in Limerick there was there was others taken I'm down. Not sure. yeah. But um I've had about um, between thirty and forty posters removed overnight there two nights ago. Orchestrated, coordinated, yeah. um ladders and vehicles had to be used. Um my feeling is it was more than one vehicle. I mean, because to take them down and we had ours wet we- very high up, way high up, um and they couldn't have been easily taken down, mm. you know. So um, we found them strewn on the road, and so again we're we're trying to um <laughs> impress on people like this is not it's not just vandalism and theft, it's an attack on the election process. It's an attack on your speech and your voice. You know that um it it's it, it these people are anti democratic and anti Irish. You know we're not um uh, we're not pulling anyone's posters down we're not uh denying anybody the right to come in and debate and 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 to tell us you know that they disagree with us that's a, one of our fundamental mm-hmm. principles that we you know we rely on in the party and but these guys want to shut you down and these these same people will go further again you know and mm-hmm. um, i have no doubts like that we haven't seen the last of it now we've reported it to the guards mm-hmm. and look and if there's anybody you know that has been going around tell over the last two nights seeing people pulling down posters a photograph of a reg or would, you know would be helpful and um, because believe me it's an attack on the people it's not it's not just an mm-hmm. attack on my posters you know the election process is is one of the most fundamental things we have in a democracy like and it's been um, attacked and yeah. so but it's not going to stop us and um, it's making me more determined all my guys are more determined you know and yeah. um, we put in a lot of hard work climbing up ladders risking life and limb climbing up ladders to get these posters up and we're all volunteers and um, you know we're relying on donations guys you know and um, get that one in <laughs> and uh, yeah so but Again, we know we have an idea who these people are, and hopefully the information has gone to the guards' locations, to CCTV around the place. Hopefully they'll be caught, and we're gonna um push for prosecutions to the full length of the law, and and yeah, so but it ain't gonna stop us. Good, really. I think I think it'll only spur you and your team on, um, yeah. in a kind of strange way, and also if you know if you were going to get fifty votes, if you were just way off, you know, uh, they would have no need to tear them down, you know, mm. so they're they're worried yeah. and i think that's a good thing i think you genuinely believe i i think you're genuinely going for a seat you know what i mean i don't think you're mucking around and, <coughs> and i think they maybe know that too you know okay well i mean i don't get into anything that i don't give a hundred percent to mm. i mean to me there's no point mm. and um, i think anybody who knows me would probably understand that you yeah. know i go full tilt yeah and yeah i mean i'm not here to lose you know I'm here to win. I think I'll tape it off there. That's a nice one. Perfect. And um, Phil Dwyer, thanks for joining me. Great stuff. Best Thank of you luck very much. The election, really. Yeah. And Garrett, we all love you, Garrett. Sound. Thank you. <laughs> like, uh, or you don't need to love me. Just give me a like and a subscribe <laughs> and a share. So I got to get in, in the, the bit that way. Thanks very much, lad. See you. Cheers.